I am Jennifer McKinnon, and I am the principal investigator for this project out here in Saipan. And I am a research associate of Ships of Discovery, uh, which is a nonprofit organization in the U.S., and also a professor in maritime studies at East Carolina University. So this is an interdisciplinary project that brings together researchers in all different types of fields, archeologists, historians, conservation scientists, biologists, and people with special technical experience like photogrammetry and using ROVs on deep water sites. And we're out here investigating the battle for Saipan and the submerged resources that are in the waters in the lagoon and in the deeper areas outside of the lagoon, which we haven't surveyed before. So there's a lot of sites underwater that are associated with the battle. The Japanese and U.S. aircraft, shipwrecks, and assault vehicles. And they were part of the invasion and also, you know, fighting the battle on land. And they're underwater in, you know, zero meters of depth, so really shallow and on the surface all the way out to where we're searching up to 50 meters below the surface. So the battle occurred in June and July of 1944 and was fought over about a month long period. And during that time, a lot of these vehicles and ship were lost either, you know, through battling or happenstance. And so what we're doing out here for this project is continuing to uh, record those sites. So some of the sites we know, and we have been monitoring them and watching how, you know, how they've changed over time and their preservation. Others are brand new discoveries and sites that we're trying to locate to add to the richness of what we know about the history of the battle. The battle happened on land, but very much, you know, the, everything that is in the water was all supporting and pushing forward that battle on land. So we're trying to fill the gap in what we know about the battle by researching what's underwater. One of the things we've been working on is bringing veterans out as a rehabilitative adaptive event to train them in underwater archaeology and get them diving on sites because they have an intimate knowledge about battle and war and can be very helpful for us as archaeologists um, in collaborating. It's a symbiotic relationship really for young people who are just trying to figure out what it is they want to do with their lives. You know, it's important to do something that you love and if you are interested in marine world, getting involved in nonprofits or local community groups that are actually out um, doing beach cleanups or working on science. There seems to be quite a few sort of educational programs these days for kids. And so just going out and getting some experience and doing it and talking to professionals is a really good way of finding out whether or not it's a fit for you. There's a lot of different career paths um, in not only the sciences, but also in humanities and social sciences. So I'm a maritime archeologist with an anthropology degree um, and I work on and under the water. And so you, if you're not as into sciences and you're more into the sort of humanities and the stories and the history, um, you can go either paths and that can also take you underwater.